In this video, I'm going to be covering my top 10 tips for Project Zomboid. Now, whether you're a total beginner or whether you're someone who has a couple hours under their belt, I feel like you could find this video very useful. If you do go on to find any of the tips in this video useful, then a like would be very much appreciated and maybe even consider subscribing as it helps me out a lot as a creator. If you want to see some live gameplay or you want someone to talk to about Project Zomboid or you want to ask some questions then feel free to head over to my live stream, it's the top link in the description and I stream every single day. So chances are when you're watching this video, I'm live right now. But now that we've got that out of the way, let's get into the tips. The first tip that I want to talk about is Aim Outline. If this isn't enabled by default, make sure that you turn it on. It will give you an outline around the zombies when using ranged and melee weapons, telling you when you're going to hit. This can be an absolute lifesaver when it comes to dealing with zombies. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people swing and miss completely, and then before you know it, you're bit and you're starting a fresh character, so please, please, please make sure that you have this turned on. In the early game, you can get some early levels for free by watching the Life and Living channel on the TV. You can level up skills such as carpentry, cooking, fishing, foraging and also farming. It's very important that you take advantage of this as at some point the TV channels will stop running. The time that the TV shows are on are 6am and pm and also 12am and pm. I will leave a link to the TV schedule chart in the description if you want to take a more in-depth look and see which shows run on which days. Additionally to the TV shows, you can read books which will give you an XP multiplier, meaning that you get more XP for doing relevant tasks relating to that skill, and more XP from watching the TV shows. I don't really recommend you going house to house looking for books, I think you should always seek out a bookstore, even if it's just to grab, you know, maybe volume 1 or the most basic of books. But if you are looting houses, I do suggest always checking the bookshelves for magazines and also the skill books. A very handy piece of information is that if you kill a zombie inside the building, the zombie has a chance to have a house key in his inventory. This can be extremely useful when it comes to getting into the armories at things like police stations or looting the storage unit complexes because if you kill a zombie inside one of the storage units then you get the house key for that entire block of storage unit. The next thing that I want to talk about is car keys. Car keys have a chance to spawn in the ignition of the car or in the glove box of the car. It can also spawn on the floor around the car or inside the house that the car is parked at. Now, if you're looking for the key on the ground next to the car, a good tip is to go into the search mode when you're looking around the car because maybe you can't see the key, maybe it's, it's lying behind the car, but if you're in the search mode then it will pop up and it means that you can find the key. Project Zomboid is not like any other zombie game. You know, in, in other zombie games, you, you find a gun and you just start mowing down hordes of zombies. Project Zomboid isn't like that. In the early game, you're not going to have any levels in aiming, in the aiming skill. So, you'll probably find that firing a gun does a lot more harm than it does good. The best way to level up your aiming skill is to get your hands on a shotgun as you get more XP based on the amount of hits that you get whilst using the gun. And with a shotgun, you can target multiple zombies at the same time, meaning you have a higher chance to hit, meaning that you earn more XP. Speaking of fighting zombies, when you are fighting zombies, it's a good idea to walk backwards when fighting them with a melee weapon. Because if you're walking backwards, there's less chance that the zombies are going to be able to overwhelm you or get on top of you or even flank you. And if you do feel like that's happening, whilst you're holding right click, you can press spacebar and that'll push the zombies away, giving you a window of time to escape or, you know, get a bit of distance between you and the zombies so that you can start to fight them again. Additionally to this, using a fence or a window to kill zombies is a very effective method to kill zombies because the zombie will jump through the window or over the fence, meaning it will be on the floor. Your character can swing down with a melee weapon or, as I was saying, holding right click, spacebar, means that you stamp on the zombie's head. When you're looting zombies, if you aren't wearing a digital watch, then I strongly suggest that you wear one. 
as it can help keep track of the time, the date, the temperature, and also you can set an alarm on your digital watch telling you when to wake up, meaning that you don't miss those TV shows that we were talking about. Sometimes you can pick up a watch off a zombie and it will already have an alarm set on it. Make sure that you disable this as if you're sneaking somewhere and this alarm goes off, then it could leave you in a lot of trouble. Later in the game, you're going to want to find a generator as it'll allow you to keep the power on in your base, meaning that you can keep the lights on and it also means that you can keep the food in your freezer frozen so that it doesn't rot or go off. The best place to reliably find the generator, in my opinion, is the storage units, as I've seen upwards of 10 spawning in these locations frequently at any given time. And as I said earlier, when you know when we were talking about the house keys, if you kill a zombie inside one of these lockers, there is a good chance that it will drop a house key, meaning that you get the key for the entire block that you're in at this time. The final tip that I have for you is choosing a spawn location. Now look, I know that it's tempting to choose Muldra at the very top of the list, and I did it when I started. Listen, do not choose Muldra. It's a trap. It has an extremely high amount of zombie spawns there versus somewhere like Riverside that has the lowest amount of zombie spawns in the game. If you're a brand new player, it's your first day, that's where I recommend that you spawn. But where I like to spawn or where I would recommend that you spawn maybe on your fourth or fifth character is Rosewood. Rosewood has the second lowest amount of zombies spawning in it and it has a lot of great places to loot. It's got the prison, it's got mechanic shops, it's got some great places and some great buildings that you can fortify or take over for a base, such as the fire station. The fire station is probably my personal favourite for new players. If this video helped you, then please leave a like and a comment. It helps me a lot as a creator and maybe even consider subscribing. If you have any other questions or there's anything else that you want to ask, then feel free to head over to my live streams. It's the top link in my description. So you can head over there, talk to me about PZ. I'm probably live as you're watching this video. And yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.